Hi everybody, and thank you for joining me today. So, we're moving past the uh, background, more into the bulk of the pattern here. We've got uh, one of the masks on the uh, Happy Mask Salesman's uh, backpack we're doing. I actually do remember seeing that one in the game, so. Yeah, it's hard to say which of the, uh, between this and the uh, Ocarina of Time I liked better, because I liked them both for very different reasons. I did like the sort of non-linear as much of the Majora's Mask. There's a lot more side quests you could do without your fairy companion constantly uh, bugging you to go to the next temple like she was in uh, Ocarina of Time. But, I mean, I loved the epic story of Ocarina of Time, so, yeah, it's really hard to choose. Yeah, I'm probably going to get a lot of uh, stitching done this week because uh, my husband's away. <laughs> on uh, work, so, yeah. And I got myself a, a stitching lamp, finally. Yeah, the problem is, especially at this time of year, the, uh, the sun sets so early that uh, I lose my natural light. Like around, even as early as say 2.30 even, or three, it started getting to be uh, too dark to see even with my drapes pulled open all the way and uh I was getting eye strain which obviously you do not want to happen <clears throat> so I went and bought one of those daylight crafting lamps that's supposed to be good for not giving you glare or flicker or anything that's going to cause you headaches or eye strain and uh so far it's been pretty good I've been quite happy with it so it's funny because um as soon as I put it together, my son said, Mom, that looks like a street light. I was like, oh, you're right. It kind of does. Because it's one of those, it's a base and then it just curves over with the light and you can bend the, the neck to direct the light anywhere you want. So it does look like a street light. Street lights are a thing for him. He, um, he watched so many videos on YouTube. I mean, I guess he's not the only one into it. And now he'll drive by and he'll say, Mom, that's a high pressure sodium. And that's, you know, he he knows all the different lights. And uh, he's the same with um, train signals. Yeah, he can tell you what the kind of the bells are on them and the, uh, the different arms and cantilevers and all that stuff. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, we said we didn't go last summer because we were visiting family but we're saying that this upcoming summer we might go to uh, Moose Jaw because there's a big train museum there and he would just love that so yeah like when he went to the zoo with his grandparents his favorite part was uh, riding the uh, the little train around the uh, around the grounds and they said uh, one time the uh, conductor actually let him uh, blow the whistle. So yeah, he was uh, he was in heaven. <laughs> yeah, we have a little. <clears throat> A museum in town that has like one train car so he's seen that but yeah he would love to go see a train museum that's for sure so yeah I'm getting out of this background now we're getting into more of the detail so this should be hopefully interesting But yeah, this pattern is uh, flying by. I'm already coming on to 6%, so 
yeah, well, when it has some much fewer stitches, that tends to happen. Because, yeah, the last one was almost 225,000, and this one is only 48,000. So, yeah, it's a lot fewer stitches to get to 1% than the last one. Yeah, the last one I did, I think 1% <clears throat> would take me about four to six days, depending. And then this is like I'm doing a percent almost per day sometimes. So, yeah. Yeah, I love my big projects, but sometimes a, a smaller one to give you a sooner sense of gratification is nice too. Yeah, I've got my uh, fabric now. For backing the last pattern I did but I'm thinking I'm not going to get that mounted and finished until the new year because yeah it's December is always so busy right <laughs> yeah we made our uh, gingerbread house yesterday and uh, I realized after I made the icing I whipped up the icing that uh, I had forgot to make the uh, the windows because we always put a little light in there and uh, my husband said, well, just draw them on. I said, no, but it has to have windows or you can't see the light because I always make them with um, caramelized sugar, right? You just, um, like as if you were making peanut brittle, you just melt a bunch of sugar and then pour them in the, the window holes that you uh, cut out and uh, let them harden. And that takes a while. So I ended up, what I ended up doing was I melted the sugar, poured it in. As soon as it had settled enough to move it, I, because it was on parchment paper, I uh, sandwiched it, each piece, between two ice packs, one on top and one underneath, to uh, solidify that uh, that sugar as fast as possible. So, Because otherwise the icing was going to start uh, solidifying, right? Yeah. You don't want royal icing to dry out on you because uh, it goes extremely hard. Because, of course, the whole point is that it's supposed to, you know, keep the... Uh, keep the uh, pieces together on your gingerbread house. So, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, because um, I remember learning in um, cooking class, they said it's hard enough that you could even transport, like, ship gingerbread houses and they won't come apart yeah because generally you have different kinds of gingerbread there's eating gingerbread and then there's construction gingerbread which is not very nice to eat but it looks good <laughs> that's the kind that they generally use for competitions but my mother-in-law's recipe is really nice because uh it's sturdy enough it holds up but uh it's still soft enough that you can eat it even like weeks later. So yeah, it's really, really good. And I like hers because you don't use molasses in it. Instead, you use a lot of brown sugar. It doesn't have, I've always found molasses, I don't know, it has kind of a taste to it that I don't really like when you can taste it. So, and like, I mean, they get molasses by removing it from the brown sugar to make white sugar. So so many recipes is white sugar and then you add molasses back in so instead with this one you just do it all in one with lots of brown sugar it's like three cups of brown sugar to six cups of flour so it's a lot but yeah <clears throat> This was like that scary mask he had. I don't think it was one you could actually wear in the game. I remember if you walked around the uh, the mask salesman in the game, they had one that looked like Mario, which again, you couldn't wear in the game. Uh, they had one that looked like Elvis. <laughs> yeah. So, gave me a smile. Yeah, it's wild how much detail they put in that game. Apparently, I was reading that 
they had to put that game together in a year because um, Ocarina of Time did so well that they wanted to capitalize on it. So they only had, developers only had a year to uh, put it together. So, I mean, the amount of detail they managed to put in in such a constrained time frame is just incredible. Even, you know, this is like over 20 years later and there's still things in there that people are pointing out that I had no idea were there. It's pretty cool. And that's why, yeah, they said they used the same um, avatars for the characters so that they didn't have to rebuild them and then they just repurposed them. But it actually made for a kind of, you know, fun. You'd see the character and go, okay, who was that in Ocarina of Time? Oh, that was the chicken lady. You know, the one where you had to um, gather up all her chickens and give them back to her and she gave you an empty bottle, which was very useful in that game. You could carry, you know, magic potions and milk and fish and even bugs in them. Yeah, I think one of my favorite side quests in the uh, Majora's Mask was the uh, the one where you're helping the little girl on the ranch to um, protect the cows from aliens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so you have to stay up all night and shoot them with arrows to keep them from getting in the barn. Because if they get in the barn, they steal the magic cows and the little girl and then she comes back and if she got kidnapped by the aliens then yeah when you talk to her she's all just like totally like a zombie she's so out of it uh. yeah they have yet to make any legend of zelda movies there were a couple of cartoons in like the 80s but yeah, not movies. I always wondered too because in the <clears throat> in the games, the main character Link, he never talks, right? Uh, so um, in the movie, would they find ways around it, or would he finally talk? Because yeah, the only sounds like you hear him yell and stuff when he's fighting and things, but he never actually talks to anybody. So, <clears throat> which of course worked well in the older technology when. Nobody was voice acting apart from, you know, yells and stuff. So um, it worked. But now, of course, you know, like uh, video games are getting to be almost movie quality sometimes, especially for the cutscenes. So. Okay, I'm just going to leave that threaded because I'm probably going to end up, <coughs> pardon me, back to the top pretty soon. As you can see, I sort of went bottom up with this diagonal, so I'm just filling in sort of this little area and then it's going to be over to the next section, so yeah. Like I say, I don't always work in rows, just whatever makes sense to me at the time, so. Sometimes that means I meander around a little bit. And I don't have all the colors memorized now, so I'm not sure whether there's going to be lighter colors or darker colors there. So that's why I'm drawing it along the back instead of pin stitching there, just in case, because this was super dark color. Mm-hmm. 
try that again. Yeah, still have plenty of baking left to do. I gotta still make my lemon bars that I talked about in another video, and I gotta make shortbread. And then closer to actual Christmas, I like to make um, eggnog cheesecake. Yeah, because I um, can't actually drink eggnog, unfortunately, the milk in it. But if it's baked in cheesecake, I'm fine. So yeah, that's my way of having eggnog is having eggnog flavored cheesecake. It's so yummy. I'll often make it throughout the year, so I'll freeze portions of it, of eggnog, and uh, then I can make it throughout the year, not just at Christmas, because I love it so much. Yeah, it doesn't freeze good. Like, if you wanted to drink it, it would it would separate. But um, if you're doing it to bake, then it's not a problem, of course, because it's all going to get just mixed in anyway, and I haven't noticed any texture issues. So, how long is this one? Okay, long and... As is this one. Okay, so I'm gonna juggle two threads here, I think. Or we'll see what I'll do. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I'll carry the other one sort of over and back up is what I might do. I'll decide sort of after I do this row. <laughs> guinea pig would have you convinced that she's starving but she's fine <laughs> she's got plenty of hay and water and pellets she's just greedy and she wants vegetables <laughs> but yeah you can't let them have too many as uh it upsets their stomachs if you overdo it so yeah they would gorge themselves all day but that was like how my mom said they had some fish and uh yeah, they overfed them and they died. <laughs> Says they, they acted like they were hungry, but they're just greedy. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, let's see, did I do the correct one? Yeah, I did, okay. I was a little nervous. I'd grabbed the wrong thread there, but no, I did it correctly. Okay, I think that. Yeah, I'm gonna tie that off. Oh yeah, so we just finished watching season four of Westworld, and sadly it's the last one. Yeah. So, they were planning to do one more season, but they didn't get the go-ahead, so yeah, unfortunately. I have to say, the first season was the best, but I enjoyed the whole thing. It was very very mind-bending and twisty. Although they said one of the problems was after season two, people got confused. And uh, so it they dropped a lot of viewership and they kind of never really recovered, which I can believe. I enjoyed it, but yeah, I remember after we finished the season thinking, I think I'm going to have to watch that again because I'm not quite sure exactly what happened. <laughs> uh. Yeah, especially because, like, later seasons, they moved away from the Western aspect of it, which people liked. That was one of the big selling points, so. Because that's why I didn't even really know what it was about when I ordered the first season on DVD. I just went, okay, somebody said it's science fiction and Western, and Anthony Hopkins is in it. And I just went, well, okay, you got me. I'll watch pretty much anything he's in. He is so talented. Yeah. Oh, man, I don't know if I mentioned it before. I watched the um, the movie he was in recently that won a bunch of awards. Um, I think it was called Father, but it was about an older guy suffering dementia, and it was based on a play, and it was so good. Like, even, I won't put any spoilers, but basically it's it's very disjointed as if, you know, 
what seems to be true one day isn't true the next day, which makes sense if, you know, somebody is suffering dementia. That is how it would be. And yeah, by the end, you weren't quite sure which of the storylines were, were real and which weren't. But, uh, oh, his performance was excellent. And, oh, at the end, he made me cry. And apparently I read um, the behind-the-scenes stuff that he made the entire set cry, which I, I can believe. Yeah. So I'm just kind of filling this in and then I'm going to, like I said, go back to the top again. Let's see if I can get these out or if they're going to... I think we are good. Oh, that one just barely stayed threaded by a couple of millimeters, but it did. <sighs> Although I can thread pretty quickly now. Just had so much practice at it. Okay. So these are still threaded from earlier, but I think once I park these, I'm going to unthread them since I'm going back to the top. It's going to take me a while to get to them, so yeah. They're more likely to tangle if I leave them threaded, so... Thirty-seven fifty-two. Yeah, so more colors in this pattern than my last one, but as it's a smaller pattern, that means uh, none of them are over a huge number of stitches. Because I had some in my last pattern that were like, you know, 10,000 or more of one color. So here that's, yeah. I think the most I have of one color is over 3,000. 500 or something like that but I guess this should good, give some pretty good shading yeah it took me a while to get into anything that wasn't a blue from that corner till I got to these uh, colors here in the mask Let's try not to tie knots in this. 
be careful. That does happen sometimes, these threads, so. Let's see if I can undo that or if it's gonna be hopeless. <laughs> I can see how that happened now. I've picked it apart a little bit. Let's see if I can continue to pick it apart. There we go. Perfect. Got it before it formed a knot. Okay. Another one. Out of the diagonal. This is seven fifty five. Ah, I think this is a brand new, completely brand new Hank. Yeah, I bought just for this pattern. Yeah, I don't have a full set of colors, but I have most of them, I would say. I didn't bother buying any that I don't, aren't in a project I'm planning, because uh, I would worry that I might have a dye lot issue later if I were to do that. So, so yeah, I've kind of liked the idea of having a whole set, but then the problem is if it takes me years to use that color and I end up needing more than one hank of it, then I would worry about it matching. So, yeah, I'll just buy new at that point. Or I've said sometimes, yeah, I had quite a lot of older stuff because I started stitching, oh, geez, way back. <laughs> so, uh, I have some colors that I bought, gee, over 20 years ago. So, yeah, I would kind of worry that. The dye process might have changed in the meantime. So I keep them for the ones if a pattern only needs, you know, three or four stitches of that color, then that's not a problem. But yeah, if it needs thousands, then I would worry about there being a potential matching dye lot issue. 38.40, so a bit of confetti here. So yeah, how much I get done in an hour really depends on, uh, oh, that's 37.40, okay. Yeah, as soon as I pulled that, I went, that does not match the color in my color key there. So that's another thing I really love about um, Pattern Keeper. Oh, it's my other box, here we go. Yeah, it shows the actual thread color there in the color key, so then you know you grabbed the wrong one because yeah 3740 is a dark purple and this is a light blue so I knew that that was not correct <laughs> oh pardon me mm. Okay, 
Or yeah, pattern keeper is nice for say like I have a capital N and then a small N symbol. Yeah, the fact that it automatically searches that for you makes it much easier to keep from messing it up. Oh, I had one pattern where it had arrow symbols pointing in three different directions in the same uh, spot in the pattern. Oh, that was a nightmare because that was before I was using Pattern Keeper, so I had to manually search through, go through the stitches, and oh man, <laughs> yeah. That really slowed me down, having to make sure I highlighted the correct, the correct symbol. Yeah. You know, I had people saying, well, they should design it better, but it's like, uh, I don't know. I mean, there are only so many symbols that you can use, so sometimes it's just going to end up with similar ones next to each other, unfortunately. Especially if you have a pattern that has a lot of, a lot of symbols. Okay, so line 20 there. <clears throat> but yeah, having an app with the proper coding makes that really, really easy. It does that searching for you and highlights it, so. snarl on the back. It did not feel right when I pulled it up. It was shorter than it should be for only using up one stitch worth of a thread there. And I'm surprised when I get the really big snarls that I didn't notice. I usually do, but eh, sometimes that happens, unfortunately. Okay. Okay, so all that is, this here is kind of in the next diagonal, so I'm just going to kind of, yeah, work my way, fill this in, and go back to the top again, like I said before that I was going to do. Okay, 17. Yeah, this is a very commonly used color in a lot of my patterns. I ended up buying a few boxes that had 12 in them. They were slightly cheaper when you bought them like that. And then that way I didn't have to worry again about dye lot issues. They're all going to match. So let's see where I am. Okay, 20. Okay, once again, I love my grid lines for helping me make sure I'm stitching in the correct place. I find them especially helpful in really big patterns where you have a lot of the same, you know, colors from one big square to the next. It could be really easy to be one square off of where you're supposed to be. I've done that before. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Don't know why. It's been difficult, but I'm right-handed, so I wasn't able to maneuver that well with my left. Okay. Yeah, one of my friends says she stitches two-handed, but she has her dominant hand on top. I'm going, man, how do you find the holes for the bottom with your non-dominant hand, you know? Uh, I tried stitching the other way, but it was just not happening. It was so awkward. Yeah, that one is just not going to want to come out with the needle still on. Sometimes that happens. Okay. 
There, did that so I can fill a whole bunch in here at one time. saying about Westworld earlier. I love the uh, theme music. I never skip it even when we're binge watching. <laughs> yeah, saying like a lot of shows just don't have theme music anymore and I kind of miss it. Because of course on network television they're always trying to uh, sell more ad space and you know, 30 second credit scene is, uh, is an ad worth, right? So, but yeah, it just... Uh, it's one of those things I miss. There was something about hearing the theme music of your favorite song coming on and, oh, there it is, it's back, you know. Ugh. So yeah, I've noticed that like streaming only shows often have, um, have a credit scene and then the, the network, like cable shows, I guess. Still using that word even though it's probably not correct anymore. <laughs> uh, they, uh, yeah, they tend to not, or some had it and then they get rid of it. Like I was saying, uh, ER had a credit music and then, yeah, as the show went on, eventually they got rid of it and changed it so that they could fit in another, another ad. So I understand they want to make money, but yeah. Yeah, or what's like saying like nowadays they make so many shows only have like eight to ten episodes and you're done so quickly, you know. And uh, I do kind of miss when, you know, shows had 26 episodes and they said there were some you would call filler episodes. But I mean, often those were the real character driven stories and they were my favorites. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm definitely not against action scenes or anything like that, but yeah, my favorite stories are always character-driven stories. Same with books, too. Yeah. 
That's why I can enjoy stories that are like kind of cliche if your characters are good. It won't matter that I've basically heard that story before, but yeah, if you make me love your characters, then I'm not really going to care. I've had so many that I said, yeah, you know, we could have turned this into a drinking game. There were so many cliches, it doesn't matter. I enjoyed it so much. So Fill in this sort of area here too, and then we're going to properly move into the next diagonal. Okay, three, triple seven. Color's definitely not a blue. <laughs> it's like a wine red. This might be the top of the mask salesman's head. I'm not sure. Just have to see as we continue on. Okay, it's 3858. Yeah, I have uh, two tubs worth of uh, envelopes. Is this was too many colors to fit in one? Again got the wrong one. I opened up the envelope and it was yellow. Yeah. It's not what is showing on my uh, pattern keeper. It wouldn't have really made sense to have uh, yellow sort of in the middle there, I don't think. is too short. Maybe a longer one. It seemed longer when I first pulled it out of the envelope, but it's not. It was so funny. I watched uh watching some old Christmas stuff with my kiddo and I remember when he was about six or something he says to me mom i want to watch the squeaky nose show and i'm going the squeaky nose show and then i realized he meant rudolph <laughs> like well i guess it fits i mean his nose does squeal so oh yeah he has a little rudolph stuffy too whack ton of threads connected now <laughs> certainly isn't boring okay 3826 yeah I had to buy a lot of new colors for this pattern it's another brand new one here When I put them in my envelopes, I did my, where I measure them out and cut the pieces so they're ready to go. 
I don't know. I like sorting and organizing things. It's relaxing to me. <laughs> I've always been that way. Yeah, I remember when we were having those um those tests in uh, high school what to see like what kind of, you know, career path would suit you. And they would ask these things, you know, how would you like doing this and that? And some of the things people would, you know, laugh, oh, how would you like, you know, sorting out different objects? And people were like, oh, who would like that? And I'm thinking, well, I do. <laughs> I always have. If you're old enough to remember Pogs, I used to play with my sister's Pogs, but I wouldn't actually, like, play with them the way you're supposed to. I'd actually like to sit there organizing them into groups and stuff and laying them out was always that way. I remember when I was a kid and my grandparents had a box of old um, uh, toy trucks, you know, just the little couple inch ones or whatever. And I used to love uh, setting those out, except there was one that didn't really fit with the others because it was like this big crane truck and it was twice as long as the others. And I always set that one aside because it didn't fit with my nice neat rows <laughs> with all the rest of them. Hmm. Maybe that's why I like cross stitch over more freehand embroidery. It's the same kind of thing. It's nice and sort of neat in, you know, little rows, little squares. Oh. Yeah, because I have tried more free form embroidery, but I was not very good at it. Just like I'm not good at painting or drawing. Yeah, my son is good at it. I said he must get that from his dad's side of the family. His grandma's good at drawing too. So, actually, I think quite a few of the uh, the kids on my husband's side of the family are quite good at drawing things. So, yeah, that has never been one of my strengths. Maybe it's because I hold a pen funny. Well, nobody taught me how to, so I just kind of picked it up and, yeah. Kind of gripped it in my fist and that's how I learned to write. I tried to change it when I got older, but I can't. I'm too used to it one way, so. Yeah, maybe that's why I don't have as good control because I don't hold it properly. I don't know. Yeah, my sister can draw pretty well too and paint and such, but and actually my grandma, she, she painted quite a bit. I remember there were a few paintings in their house that she had actually painted, so yeah. yeah. And she still has them even though she lives in like a retirement community now and you know, just like a little apartment. But yeah, she still has those because I mean, hey, she made them. I could understand why you want to keep the art you created with you, I certainly would. I'm hoping the pieces I make become heirlooms for the family, right? Get handed down. After I'm gone. Especially if it's to someone who understands just how much work goes into, you know, a big piece of uh, cross stitch. What have I done here? Okay, it looks like I parked one of these incorrectly. Yes, I did. Yeah, I parked this up one higher than it should be. That's what I did, I think, or maybe not. Let me take a look. So that's one, two, yeah. Or actually, it's over 
to the left by one, I believe. Let's just take a look here. Which means, let's see, one, two, three. Oh, oh, did I pick up the wrong thread? Oh, that's what I did. Okay, so that wasn't parked incorrectly. I picked up the wrong thread, huh, <laughs> doing. Yeah, these are similar and that's what I did. Okay, well, that's why I double checked reading my grid lines there. Yeah, I grabbed this one instead. Yeah. I wonder if you noticed and were, were telling me I was making a mistake. But unfortunately, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> That's all right. Yeah, if you think you made a mistake, you know, double check that you actually have made a mistake before fixing it. I did that one time. I, I pulled out a bunch of threads that I thought I had parked wrong and then realized that, you know, I was in the wrong spot. That's why it didn't match. It's like, oh. I think at that point, I kind of just walked away from it and left it for a few hours because I was too frustrated to, to deal with it then. So I took a break from it. Ugh. I gave myself a timeout. Or maybe I gave my stitching a timeout. I'm not sure which. Okay. All right, so... unthread this because we are just about done this little this diagonal and then we're going to go to the top like I said okay let's try this again yeah one two three so this time I did grab the correct thread yeah so I've had people say they're intimidated by my work I say oh I'm just as Fallible as anyone. Mistakes do happen. I make them. I am definitely not perfect. <laughs> yeah, I think that this part I'm stitching here is, I think it's the Happy Mask Salesman's hair here. Or it could be the top of his backpack, I'm not sure. We'll have to see as we get further into the design what it actually is. Make sure that's correct. Oh, something caught. There we go. Yeah, I find maybe when you stitch something, you can really appreciate the details because uh, you've worked, you know, on every intricate bit of that pattern. So you find all the little, the little details. You might not notice when just glancing at the whole thing. Yeah, when I, I took my, um, my last piece, the Soulful Mediterranean Tranquility, I took it with me to the fabric store so I could pick a fabric for it and uh and I brought it over to the cutting table and I was rolling my uh my stitching back up and the lady said oh my gosh you know look at this you made this and and then she's kind of touching and then she says is it okay if I touch it I said oh yeah it's fine you know I haven't washed it yet so don't worry about it yeah yeah I kind of lucked out because I went to um renew my membership and uh, they said oh well our our new stickers didn't come in so they said you know what just pay the next time that you uh 
you know, that you uh, come and buy something, you can renew it then. So I was like, wow, they gave me the discount anyway. So I guess that means by the time I finally do renew it, I'll get a few more extra months to use it, which is lucky for me, I guess. Yeah, when I finish this project, I might just hang on to it without buying any cloth for a while till I finish the next one after that and then buy it for both at the same time. Yeah. Membership's about 25 bucks, but then you save 30 to 50% on fabrics, so yeah, in the end. I usually about break even, but then that means if I need any additional supplies within a year, bonus, right? So yeah, because I one time I didn't get it because I figured I'd break even, and then I ended up needing more um, material later. I was like, ah, shoot. <laughs> I should have renewed my my uh my membership because now i'd be coming out ahead but instead i wasn't so yeah yeah because like i said i don't so much that's another one i'm not great at either maybe if i followed a pattern more closely i'd have more success but yeah that wasn't what i'm great at. like i can do basic you know i can hem my pants which i have to do because i'm short or i can sew basic darts in my clothes so they fit a little better but yeah to actually like make a piece of clothing from scratch nah not so good or I could make my grime guard or whatever but yeah like I said an actual clothing from scratch is a lot of a lot of work but then I can knit one so you know go figure brains are weird <laughs> Yeah, just because you have success in one area doesn't mean it translates to another. Oh, can't be good at everything, right? Yeah. Yeah, my husband was really happy because um, the Unimog vehicle he's working on, he got, he finally got the... Um, the uh, windshield frame and everything welded together and it fits so because he said if he'd messed that up it might not have been salvageable would have been really tough to so he's pretty nervous about it he's been practicing on lots of other pieces that weren't quite as critical yeah but he finally he finally did that and he said and it fits so whew <laughs> yeah he doesn't have to stress about that anymore so yeah I said welding is one of those things it's really an art and you can only you can only really do it by practice he does um fiber optic work too which is very very difficult and uh yeah like he says you take all the instruction but you need something like a thousand practical hours of doing it before you can actually really do it with any you know kind of accuracy because it's one of those things it has to be completely perfect or it doesn't work and it's so very delicate that yeah getting that perfection is it's just something you have to spend hours and hours practicing like learning to play, play, uh, play a piece of music or learning to do surgery right they have to just practice for hours and hours I mean that's why they have so many hours in the skills lab or whatever before they ever touch an actual patient you know and then even then you have to do it under extremely close supervision for a long time. Because yeah, it's just one of those things that you have to learn how it feels right or it won't work. Yeah, I remember we were watching um, the rebooted MacGyver and yeah, there's one point where he hurt his hand. So somebody says, well, tell me what to do, you know, and I'll, uh, I'll do it. And then he's trying to explain and he says, I don't know how to tell you when it's when it's correctly you know when it's incorrectly he says you'll just I just know how it feels I can't really explain that you know it's like oh yeah I understand that yeah when it's after a while you just have to develop the the muscle memory it's like yeah sit there and explain to someone how to tie your shoes you'd have to actually sit there and probably tie them again to uh, remind yourself because you do it now without thinking yeah. 
Yeah, I remember there was a, an episode of Castle where a guy had got amnesia and he's, you know, went to the police station seeing if they could help identify him. And then one of the guys, you know, he gets an idea and he says, here, sign this. And he picks it up and just starts and says, oh, I don't know how I did that. He says, well, because you've signed your name how many times in your life without even thinking of it. It's a muscle thing, right? And uh, unfortunately, it was, you know, mostly illegible, but uh, there was enough that they could get at least that his name started with a J. So that gave them something to go off of. Yeah, that was pretty cool. I enjoyed that show. It's like comedy and mystery together. Okay, no, I gotta do this one first so I don't close anything in. Yeah, pretty sure this is either the mask salesman's head or it might be the top of another mask. I'm not sure. I might look at the mock-up later and see what it is. I pulled out some new needles the other day and I went to try and thread one and it had only half an eye. <laughs> I had a faulty one, so half of the eye was snapped off. Mm. Somehow it made it through quality control. Yeah. But yeah, on the whole, these needles I find are pretty good. I had one snap in half through the eye once. I was trying to manipulate an already done stitch and it snapped but other than that usually I find what happens is the eye starts to get kind of rough and snag and so I have to throw them out throw it out before it actually breaks but they do last quite a while like I bought this tube needles whew, at least over a year ago maybe more and I am still only about halfway through it so yeah it might have been two years I have to look up my order history but uh... okay. oh, pardon me. Mm. Oh yeah, look at that. I'm past six percent. So I said I would probably hit that today, and I have. See if I can get that. There we go. I was having trouble separating that from the other strands.
almost mixing up my 37s and 38s again. Right, let's do that. Pay attention there. Okay, just do a few more and then I think we will call it a day. I'm going to wrap it up there for now. So um, as usual, thank you so much for joining me today and hope to see you here again another time. All right. Thanks everyone. Bye.